Hey guys, so uh, my girl, Ana Nationalista, my boys, Sky Guy, say hi. Hello. And Gavin the Great, and myself, we're having an awesome, epic little soul family dinner time. And the boys, Skylar actually got, uh, just before he came out to Columbia with me, he had a session with Ana. Right, Sky, do you want to even like, that was amazing, right? So, yes. Anna has is like the Oracle of Oracles. She has the ability to literally like look up your Akashic records, do all this stuff. So we're just having these awesome authentic conversations on some of the things that came up from the session and Sky like had some questions for Anna. So he starts asking questions. Gavin starts asking questions about the Akashic records, about their lifetimes, about all this stuff, and I'm literally like, uh guys, we're we're fucking pulling up the video camera. Cause this is gonna serve a lot of people. So Anna, I'm gonna let you kind of explain maybe a little bit first before the boys ask me some questions. Like, yes. what is it that you can really do? So what um, my my abilities have given me this beautiful divine gift uh, that I'm able to see the all the five, the different body systems. So there's the physical body that most of us are aware of, the emotional body that are the events or experiences that happen to us. The mental body, which then is our expression of how we respond to the experiences. Our energy body, which is our aura, so our attitude, our expression outside of what you think. And then our, our soul body, our spirit body, which is like our, our divine truth. And then beyond that, you have the universal consciousness and the Akashic records and all the masters and angels in those higher realms and dimensions. So if we're going to bring that all into alignment of how to take this divine... Uh, universal wisdom and bring it into your human experience. And the boys were asking some questions about that. So Skylar, what was your first your question? Uh, who I was, uh, who I was before I died and was reborn as me. Which we were talking actually about. There is no such time thing as time. Time is not lateral. That that you literally can be experiencing several of your lifetimes at this very moment, your past, future, present self. And this is why, as we, you know, even as our future selves can give our present self gifts, we actually can bend time and time hop. And that's what Anna and I were actually talking about today, as we shared our little video about some of these experiences that we take people through that allow you to integrate at such a higher level of beingness and frequency that you time hop and you're now experiencing something that could have taken you 20 years to get to. So Sky was asking some questions about his different lifetimes to just understand what he's been through a little bit more. So Sky, what was that? Uh, who I was before I died and was reborn as the infamous Skyra, Skylar at Skyra underscore thing. <laughs> And so, I, uh, uh, the assigned angel for Sky is Archangel Metatron, which we found out yeah. in the session. Metatron. Yeah. Same Archangel as Not Guy Metatron, and Alon. Metatron. Yeah. Same I'm Archangel. Not the bad guy in Avengers. No. I mean, same. not Avengers, Transformers. <laughs> same it. Archangel as Guy and, and Alon, which uh, he's super close to. Yes. So we each all have an assigned archangel, and then we all have access to the, all of the archangels and the masters and saints and everyone else up there. So Archangel Metatron, I tuned in with him and asked, okay, at a higher soul conscious awareness, what is the Akashic record of the last lifetime for Sky Guy? And immediately came back with, he was a writer in... Uh, 18 something. Thank you. In uh, about the 1820s or so. And his name was Lawrence. So that was that. And then yeah. Gavin said, what was your question, babe? Uh, what was I in my last lifetime? And what did we find out? What did we, do you remember what she told you she tuned into? I lived up to 17 years old and I was... You were a saint. A saint. Gavin was a saint in Gavin. South Africa. Um, so he was a spiritual leader. And yes, that makes so much sense. Leader. This little genius. Yes, you are. Yeah, so he chose a very saintly lifetime contract in his last life, but it ended very, very soon. So he only lived 17 years. It was a South African... Uh, and then he was reassigned to me. <laughs> right? Both of these boys. Now, what's super awesome is that these guys have spent many, many lifetimes together, and they made a contractual soul agreement to come down and be partners, like 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 sister twin flames like we are. Like, like Anna and I, that's why when she met me in, so I got called literally to Europe to go do these experiences and I did not know Anna. It was through our connection that was, that I got, you know, like uh, this pool to go through that I met Anna. And when I met Anna, she literally was like, what did you say that you felt like? It was, it was <laughs> like all the, all the fireworks, all the love, like confirmation, just 
Oh my god, I see you, that you see me, that you see me, that I see you. Yeah, she was like, oh, there you are. Like yeah. that's what our souls did, and it's and and finding out and then you that. Grabbed my ass. Yeah, and then I grabbed her ass because that's just how I roll. That's how I connect. Um, and that we, we literally have like soul split our consciousness through several different lifetimes and in being several different beings that make massive difference and influence for the world because Such that's what we're doing. Yes. So, Mary Magdalene, Sophia. Yes. Yeah, this is what how we roll, bitches. You were a martyr to the top or not. Yeah. No, not at all. That's yeah. not a martyr. Joan of Arc was a martyr. Do you understand the meaning of a martyr? I do. Person killed for their religious Martyrs. Ah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. The martyr actually has to do with victim consciousness. Oh. Yeah. But yes. Yeah, no. We'll, we'll talk about that next time. So, what are your other questions? Like, what, Sky? What was your experience in um, you getting to have a session with Anna? What did it create for you? Because I felt like when we, when he came out to Europe, he was in such a different level of like Europe? understanding. Yeah, I mean, Colombia. When he was in Colombia with me. Get your hat on. The yeah. Chairman. I've been in a lot of places lately. So. <laughs> What was the experience for you? Actually, so I reached out to Anna, knowing like my Sky Guy is going through this phase right now where he's really like seeking more understanding around his own identity. And um, you know, my nanny had said, you know, he was kind of struggling with just feeling very pulled and having all these identity stuff. And so I reached out to my girl and I said, Anna babes, like I'm like feeling my mama love. I was like in tears mama and just emotional over my babes and said, you know, I just want him to be supported in being able to make decisions for himself of what's the most that what what is in alignment for him because I the one of the relationship principles is love acceptance and support that is your only job in a relationship to be a space and hold a container of love acceptance and support and so telling him like babe like I love honor and accept you no matter what and he has other relationships in his life that he was feeling very pulled like I got to operate this way or show up this way for you to love and accept me this is who I have to be and so feeling pulled as to like what is right for him so I my Anna girl because she loves me because we are twin flame sisters she's like Mars oh I love you so much she's like she's like Mars I'll go over and I'll do a session with Sky if he wants it to really assist him in like getting more clear on his Akashic records his soul contracts like his his divine his genius purpose yeah the truth of his soul purpose like why is he here why is he confused why is he feeling these different things why are the programs from common society and school not fitting in with his soul contract? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and so, so Skylar, I, I you know immediately boxed him and said, "Babes, you know, um, <laughs> Anna is is happy to come do this if you want it." And he's like, "Yes, please." Like he already knew the value of it. She actually called in from France at my birthday, um, where we did an amazing celebration. Uh, what, which was designed for me to set out my intentions for the world of where my programs are going worldwide, etc., and, and what that is intended to do vibrationally for the, con you know, the, the conscious society or you know, consciousness. And he saw what she could do and was like, "Yes, are you kidding me?" So, Scott, what did that really do for you? Where you were feeling like really confused and just kind of like uh, complete, like depressed all the time. Um, I realized that I have to have like 100 percent. On both sides. Oh, oh you're feminine masculine. Talk about that. Maybe yeah, the, the, the balance. Apparently, I'm all masculino. Uh, <laughs> well, let's explain the difference. Guy. So, we have the, the masculine energy is mostly on the right side of our body, and oh, the feminine no. energy is mostly on the left side. Right? No, now, do, right. do you, do you remember? Up, you got it on this picture. Yeah, no, oh, he did it perfectly. That was amazing. Which I love that picture, by the way, because it shows the DNA codes in the wall. He didn't even realize he I was subconsciously was writing. He was. He drew this picture um, when we were in Colombia of how he felt like he was actually what he was experiencing and what his intentions were for our ceremonies. And he literally drew what he learned with Anna that was that he was operating about 30% more fe more masculine and than he was in his feminine. So his intention became, I want to align my feminine and my masculine. Thank you so much. No, not done. Yeah, he just designed, Anna and I get hookups everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. Look at this amazing vegan creation yeah. of delightful yumminess. Vegan corn. I, so yeah, Romero and Eddie I've known for like 22 years. And so we get hooked up yeah. everywhere we go. Okay, so back to it. Feminine and masculine. And so Skylar literally drew this picture showing what his intention was. He, he drew his angel wings, which talking about activating your angel wings and, and your, your other capabilities. He also had his um, 
Drew in his arms, literally the DNA, the spiral, the, 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 the helix strands. Yeah, the helix the strands of the DNA. He didn't even realize that he was doing this. And I mean, talk about like, this is the subconsciously what we're actually tapped into. Now we were talking about earlier, Gavin, 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 Gavin. So my Gavin babes here, this is amazing. We were talking about how when I was in Dominher in Europe, um, and I was in the, the water temple where there's 22 different alien languages of sacred geometry and coding on the walls, 12 of which have never been found on this planet. And uh, so I came back, this was before I went to Columbia, and I looked at, Gavin had created his own language. He had created this own design. He had listed, like, he literally is this little genius. He created his own language. Yep, he created all these little symbols that were meant to be alphabet. He was creating his own language. Now, I was like, cool, babe, that's awesome. I get back from Dom and her, and I'm looking in the book that has um, the, the, the pictures of the water temple and the sacred geometry. And literally, in his alphabet language that he was writing and creating, there was the same type of encoding symbols on the walls in Dom and her in the temple. He was literally being transmitted a, a sacred coding, languaging from a different, obviously a different planet, a different, different uh, you know, dimension. Yeah. So, and that's 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 what's happening a lot more with children because they have the innocence of their imagination that hasn't been imposed by societal influence or manipulation or programs or other people's thoughts and energy, really, right? So, say that again. Honda Civic. <laughs> He said, I, I was writing the language to warn you there's going to be an, an alien apocalypse. And this is the truth. We are all fucking aliens. Like, like we're, well, we're, we're here transmitting from a different consciousness to be able to share and, and transmute the, the energy or transmute the mutation of ourselves so that human beings are actually up level. Like, so like Anna was just talking about, the new children coming up are the different mutated cells in this frequency that then they are activated like already transmitting these things and activated in a higher degree that when we all transmit this together we get rid of poverty we get rid of sickness we get rid of suffering no more war no more conflict it doesn't exist anymore it doesn't even all right Eddie, we gotta hook up again okay so I, I i'm gonna end it here because we're gonna finish our dinner um wanted to share with you guys a little bit of the genius that this woman is and the ability she has in tapping into the kashic records and like she said tapping into what really supported sky with even being able to understand more of himself that gave him gave himself permission to actually uh move forward in the things that gives him like hey this is who i am and this is why i get to align to what is my greatest gifts and abilities so anything else you want to say on that well, well, we'll talk about the, mas the masculine and feminine balance and what that means in fierce and force and all of those differences another time. But yeah. basically, welcome to family dinner, spirit style. Cheese potatoes! Yep, love you guys.